All right, hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this Wednesday evening. I think it's Wednesday, right? February 5th, 2020, about 6.30 p.m. West Coast time. No, it's been fairly well. I haven't done an update here in a couple days, but I uh, figured I'd jump on real quick and uh, do a quick update with the increase in earthquake activity out there. We did see, uh, well, it doesn't take anyone with a magnifying glass to realize that there was a pretty good-sized earthquake out there, 6.2 out here in the uh, Indonesia Islands region. Let me see if I can get the exact coordinate here, exactly where it's at. Oh, I'm not even gonna pronounce that name. It's like Unga Panga, Indonesia. So yeah, 589 kilometers below the surface that earthquake struck. It's a rather deep earthquake and that's uh, not, not a stranger to deep earthquakes or large earthquakes out there either. So uh, you can see there's lots of uh, tearing and whatnot of the islands and uh, just formation of islands out there. A lot of geolo geological processes going on out there. Uh, so nothing abnormal. Uh, simply pl seeing plate tectonics action right there. Uh, but it is deep. And that's what we tend to pay attention to here on this channel is the deep earthquakes and uh, their effect on pretty much global uh, earthquake activity. And uh, in this case, didn't strike too long ago. It was... Uh, earlier today uh, since then we haven't seen a whole lot of earthquake activity let's bring down this date just a tad bit here of course it would help if I was off the 6.2 let's see here there's kind of earthquake activity after that 6.2 not a lot Puerto Rico still striking out there uh, and that's something we're gonna take a look at bring back the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here and um, of course you can see the large amount of uh, earthquakes there on the globe once again it just seems pretty consistent uh, Puerto Rico that is and uh, just a lot of activity out there taking a look at the uh, USGS map here I'm gonna bring Puerto Rico into view and uh, we will go from there and once again, this is the one day, all magnitudes. So kind of showing uh, even some of the smaller earthquakes out here. But we're just going to zoom in and kind of focus out here on the uh, Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico area, the U.S. Virgin Islands, this whole area right there. Now, taking a look at the earthquake activity, we have seen a lot of all these blue circles right here. Well, they're, gonna, they're blue when I click on them, but yellow orange earthquakes up there that's kind of where we've seen the activity occur for quite some time and uh, looking on this map I kind of want to go back here and pop in uh, let's go seven days 2.5 and above and we can see a little bit of the progression that the quakes are kind of making their way towards and that's the Puerto Rico trench area now that's the subductions area up there to the north uh, this area right here definitely capable of producing some significant size earthquakes and that's kind of seems like where this activity is headed towards um, especially with the migration of quakes well to the north of the Puerto Rico Island closer to that subduction zone area I did do a couple video updates within the past week or so in regards to uh, Puerto Rico and also the Puerto Rico trench region you want to check it out and be there on my channel within probably the past couple videos of my latest videos on the channel so we're not going to go into too much detail on that specific area but we will make note of the uh, progression of the quakes here over the last seven days and including today including today with the progression of not big earthquakes but Earthquake activity nonetheless, kind of closer towards that, uh, like I said, that Puerto Rico trench area there. Uh, back in, uh, let's see, when was that here? Give you a little bit of information on that. Back in 1787, uh, Puerto Rico region, May 2nd, uh, they believe a magnitude 8.0 to 8.5 struck the region. Although, shortly after announcing that, uh, they believe there's evidence that it was only about a 6.9. This information coming off of the Wikipedia website, 
which I tend to look towards for uh, factual information. Not my only source of information, but it's something I look forward to when it comes to historical, uh, or, or check into when it comes to historical activity. Uh, it did produce a tsunami. Um, the earthquake may have reached some 40 to 60 feet high, mostly because the Caribbean Ocean is um, quite shallow. Um, coastal regions of the island were swamped, producing a thin layer of crust, showing that salt water had reached almost two miles inland. So, significant quakes possible. Also, back in 1918, there was a 7.1 that struck that region too. So, larger quakes than what we've seen are possible within this region. And, uh, of course, the closer you get to that subduction zone, uh, that's where we could see, uh, obviously, some larger quakes as they do produce uh, much more um, much more movement so anyway it's an eye it's an, kind of something to keep an eye open out there um, like I say seven days ago or within the last seven days it's kind of progressing but uh, taking a look at the rest of the globe here central United States kind of well at least out there in the southern plains region I heard you guys had some snow lucky out there around oklahoma city area i believe somewhere around there seen quite a bit of snow out around i think it was tyler texas so pretty cool i guess if you don't live out there it's kind of cool but uh looking at the state of oklahoma here a little bit of earthquake activity just today um nothing big the biggest one i think is going to be what do we got 2.7 there uh, just kind of scattered about the land. There's a lot of fracking operations out there, natural gas, oil rigs, a lot of wells. Um, so no doubt uh, this stuff out here is kind of expected when we see increase in pressure out here in the region. Not a whole lot of activity to the north towards Kansas, but uh, mostly confined right there in the beautiful state of Oklahoma. Um, Southern California is still seeing... Their fair share of smaller earthquakes, nothing major. Um, just continued aftershock activity in the Ridgecrest area. Uh, some smaller activity. Not really any swarming, just a sporadic um, amount of small microquakes throughout Southern California. Uh, mostly on the Pacific side of the plate, which would be on the west side of the San Andreas Fault System west side of the plate boundary yes that's what i said um an area like that i like to keep an eye on is down here in the salton sea region the southern section of the san andreas fault system kind of right there where it ends and extends into the brawley uh the brawley fault system i was trying to get this to pop up here um a lot of times we get swarming activity down there uh, which is kind of worrisome especially with uh, the big monster of the fault the plate boundary up here to the north, the San Andreas Fault Zone, um, really close by. So right now, no swarming down there near Salton Sea, but there is a small little speck of a microquake. I guess it's worth no, uh, mentioning, a 2.0. Uh, but Globally, though, folks, everything looking, uh, I guess, normal. For now, uh, like I say, the only thing is that deep earthquake out there in the Indonesia Islands region, which we will uh, continue to watch for some future movement out here. It's pretty deep. That's, I mean, that's a super deep one. Uh, but other than that, folks, uh, hope everyone has a good night out there. Like I say, it's kind of mellow here on this end. Uh, I do have Yellowstone up there going. Uh, sometimes they periodically pause or cut me off. I don't know what's going on, but... Kind of looks like it's paused again, which I'll fix. But anyway, have a good night, everyone. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. And uh, make sure you stay safe out there. Peace out.